Okay, today is our second section of the quadrilateral proofs where we're going to go through and again write our proof statements for what the main properties of these quadrilaterals are. And so remember you have this reference page on page 9 and another reference page on page 10. And so the difference of what we're doing today versus what we did in last class is we're finding slope and distance to write our proof. And so for it to be a parallelogram, like we talked about last class, is opposite sides are parallel, which is slope, and congruent, which is distance. And so we're going to start out by plotting our points. So L is negative 2, 3. So I come back to up 3 and plot my L. M is positive 4 positive 3, so I plot my m. n is positive 2, negative 2, and o is negative 4, negative 2. And then I connect them, and I can see it's parallelogram, but now I'm going to prove it, okay, because this is about proofs, proving something is a parallelogram. And so my first step is I'm going to find my slope of everything. And so if it's a horizontal line like this, our slope is zero. So I can see LM and NO are both slope of zero, and so that will be my first evidence statement. LM is parallel to NO because they both have a slope of zero. My next statement is going to be the other side. So here I just count rise over run is my slope. And so to get from M to N, I'm coming down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's negative 5. And backwards 2, so negative 2. So that's negative 5 over negative 2, which simplifies to positive 5 over 2. And it looks like they're parallel, but I'll check. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2. And so OL is also 5 over 2. So my next statement is MN is parallel to, to OL. They both equal 5 over 2. So because this is a proof, I'm always going to follow up with the number that lets me know this equals it. Okay. Next is distance. So if it's a slope of zero or undefined, distance is easy. I just count. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. And so I can add that statement of LM also is congruent to NO. They both have the distance of six. If it is a diagonal line, I have to use Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or if you'd rather, you can plug the points into distance formula. I've already counted out my sides, so it's really easy to plug in 5 squared plus 2 squared equals my c squared. And since I don't have space there, I'll continue it down here to be 25 plus 4 equals c squared, which means 29 equals c squared, and so the square root of 29 equals c. And square root of 29 does not simplify, so I'm going to leave it as that. So that was LO is the square root of 29. Since I know this is also 5 and 2, I know it's the same. I don't have to do the problem twice because I've already counted the 5 and 2 out. And so I follow up with my statement of MN is congruent to OL. They equal square root of 29. Okay, and then our level 4 way is also to work with the diagonals. And so another way we can show a parallelogram is that diagonals bisect each other. So remember, bisect is equal halves. And the way we find equal halves is we show that the move points are the same. Okay. 
And so we're going to find the midpoint of each line and of each diagonal. So diagonal are the ones that come across the center. And so we're going to say this point where they cross, if the middle of MO is the same as the middle of LN, then that means the diagonals bisect each other. And so we're going to use midpoint formula, which is just half of x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2 is our midpoint formula. So for LN, My points are L would be my x1, y1, and n would be my x2, y2. And so I just add up the negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2. And then I add up my 3 plus negative 2 divided by 2. That gives me 0 and one half. And so my LN midpoint is zero and one half, which you can see matches where I graphed it, zero and one half. So now to find my next one, I'm gonna find MN. And so for MN, I have X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And so I have 4 plus negative 4 divided by 2, 3 plus negative 2 divided by 2, and we can see easily that comes out to the same 0 and 1 half. So my MO midpoint is 0, 1 half. And so my evidence statement for that is that my diagonal's midpoint bisect each other. So I'll write LN biceps MN. And the proof is that the midpoint is 0, 1 half. So we've got through our Parallel, congruent, and bisect, those all have to go in our evidence box with the numbers to prove it. All right, so these next few shapes, uh, to save some time in the notes, the slope and distance is already here for us. And so if we're proving something is a rectangle, We um, first show that it's a parallelogram, okay? So I always default to opposite sides parallel. Then we either show that diagonals are congruent, which means the diagonals are the same length, or we show that it has a right angle using slope. So our proof statement for rectangles always have to start with the parallel lines. So we say GH is parallel to IJ. HI is also parallel to JG. And we put our numbers to prove it. So those equal 1 half. This equals negative 2. Then we write that because these are perpendicular, so remember right angle means perpendicular perpendicular, um, which means opposite reciprocal slopes. which we have one half is the opposite reciprocal of negative two. So I'm going to write GH is perpendicular to HI, which is perpendicular to IJ, which is perpendicular to JG, 
because we have the 1 half and negative 2. So we always include the numbers to prove the statement we are writing. All right, rhombus, we also start with a parallelogram statement. So we're going to start with which sides are parallel, and then we either prove diagonals are perpendicular, adjacent sides are equal, or my favorite one, the one I'm going to show here, is prove that all four sides are equal. And so my statement for rhombus is going to start with my parallel. AB is parallel to CD. And those are both three-fourths. BC is parallel to DA. And those are both zero. And then I come over to distance and just see that they're all the same. So AB is congruent to BC, is congruent to CD, is congruent to DA. And they all equal Y. So that is my proof for a rhombus. Next is square. So square has to have three proofs. So it has to have parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus. And so we have to show sides are parallel, we have to show right angles, we have to show all sides are equal because square is the overlap of all three of those. And so here again they already have the slope and distance for us. So we're going to write our proof statement. So we'll start with slope. A to B is parallel to C D. And they're both three fourths. BC is parallel to DA. Those are both negative four thirds. Since those are perpendicular slopes, AB is perpendicular to BC, which is perpendicular to CD which is perpendicular to DA, and those are because we have 3 fourths and negative 4 thirds. And the distance of all is the same, so AB is congruent to BC, is congruent to CD, is congruent to DA, because they all have sides of 5. So that is our proof statement for a square. We have the three levels. And so just to help you see in your two diagrams here, square is three levels down. We have parallelogram, rectangle, square, or parallelogram, rhombus, square. So that's why we need to have three proof statements there. Or if you do it this way, we have parallelogram, Rectangle and rhombus both need two proofs, the parallelogram and their individual one. Square needs one, two, three proof statements. All right, so then this one, it asks us to prove what it is. And so we're going to look here, we say, okay, we have two sets of parallel lines. So CO is parallel to AT because they both have slopes of zero. OA is parallel to TC because they both have slopes of undefined. In our distance, they both equal the opposite sides. So we can say CO equals AT, which is 5. OA equals TC, which is 5. 
and then we can also say we have those perpendicular zero and undefined are perpendicular so we also have co is perpendicular to oa is perpendicular to at is perpendicular to tc because we have zero and undefined and so based on that this is the parallelogram this is rectangle and so based on what we found there, it is rectangle. This one also gave us the graph so we can look. Yes, it looks correct. But on your test, you might be asked to just do this, write your proof statements, and from these, determine what shape it is. And so you just go by the properties. All right, next we have kite. Okay, so kite means we find distance and length of all four sides and list out the two pairs that are the same. And then we find slopes of the diagonals. So we do not need slopes of the original sides for the kite proof, although we can write a statement of no parallel sides. And so first step, we're going to plot the points. So negative four and positive four is G. 1 and 4 is O, 6 and negative 6 is A, and T is negative 4, negative 1. So I connect it all, so I have it, and it's going to be easy to count out. And so I'm going to go ahead and find the, I'm going to find slope because that helps me. So GO So GO slope is 0, which means I can count the distance 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my distance is 5. Uh, GT is another easy one where my slope is undefined. And so my distance, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so my first statement can be GO equals GT, or I can say GO is congruent to GT. They both equal 5. And they're consecutive sides. T and A, I need to count my rise and run to find the distance. So I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so for my OA, my distance will be 5 squared plus 10 squared, which equals 125. So then 125 does simplify. So it goes to 5 and 25. 25 goes to 5 and 5. So that simplifies to 5 root 5. And then TO, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which helps me. I know I said it the same way, a 5 squared plus 10 squared, and so it's going to come out to the same 5 root 5. And so OA is congruent to TA with 5 root 5. Okay, Diag uh, kites, though, must have the diagonals also. And so we have to do step two with our diagonals. And so the slope of the diagonals just means we count from G to A. 
So now I'm coming from all the way from G to A. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So my rise was negative 10 because I was coming down. And my run is 1, is the same 10 I already counted out here. And so that simplifies to negative 1. My, so that would be this diagonal here. And if I plot it, I see that's correct. I'm going through the corner of every single square for negative 1. And then my second diagonal is T, O. And so T and O, I've already counted. I count up, up this 5 and then forward another 5, which simplifies to positive 1. And so my statement from diagonals is that GA is perpendicular to TO because 1 and negative 1 are opposite reciprocals. So that is my kite proof. All right, last of all, we have trapezoids. So trapezoids, we have to show one pair of sides is parallel and one pair not parallel. And then we check and see are those non-parallel sides equal or not. So here, again, it has already found the slope and distance for us, so we don't have to review how to do that. I'm just going to go through and check. Okay, I have two parallel sides, so Ka is parallel to Te with a slope of two-thirds. And then my other ones, At is not parallel to Ek. Because we have negative four-thirds and undefined. And then I'm always going to check my non-parallel sides. So my non-parallel sides is that same AT and EK. I check their distance and their distance is not the same. So we have 5 and 6. And so they are not congruent. So I cross out the congruent sign and list my distances. So it is just a trapezoid. Okay, and our last one starts out the same way, and so we see we have our two parallel sides. So MI is parallel to LK. IL is not parallel to KM because we have zero and undefined. These one they both equal to 1. And then we look at those non-parallel sides and say IL and KM. And this time we see, yes, they do equal each other. So they are congruent. And so they both equal 3. And therefore, it is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so now your assignment, and this assignment looks very, very similar to the open note test you're going to take next class. And so the assignment, you have to find the slope and distance of your four points, figure out which sides are parallel, which are congruent. So remember, proof is always which sides are parallel, which sides are congruent, if there are perpendicular, which ones are perpendicular. And then from that, you determine what shape it is. And so, so a few of these you have to find slope and distance. Most of them already have your slope and distance. And so you're going to go through the rest of these pages and work through them carefully because that's what you will need for the test class. Your test will look similar to this.